Council and um, sounds like everybody has in front of them the instances of amendment to H145, <clears throat> draft 1.1. So because this is an instances, it's a little tricky to track the changes here, but the first instance of amendment is adding um, a phrase to section two, which is the section that um, contains the law enforcement use of chokehold crime. So um, the language that's added here makes it clear that um, any uh, chokehold done by law enforcement that's done in violation of the standards, um, the standards for law enforcement use of deadly force would um, be um, an element of that crime. So um, I think that the chair described this as a technical amendment because the bill, as you know, also um, make some changes to the justifiable homicide statute, which makes it clear that justifiable homicide applies if a law enforcement officer uses a chokehold um, in compliance with the standards. So, um, but I think, again, I think that the re request from DPS was really to make it perfectly clear that, um, that this crime does not apply if a law enforcement officer is employing a chokehold um, in compliance with the standards. So by adding those words in violation of, that is when a law enforcement officer could be charged under the crime as long as all the other elements are satisfied, including that um, the person suffered serious bodily injury or death. So that is, um, that's the explanation for the first instance of amendment. I'll hold here to see if there are questions about that. Yeah, so Bryn, um, just wanna make sure. So page six, I just wanna, the bill is, as passed, so I want to make sure. Yeah, we're on page six. So this would be adding the words um, in violation of 20 VSA 2368 C6 on line 13. So um, in subdivision B of the crime, it would read a law enforcement officer acting in the officer's capacity as law enforcement who employs a chokehold on a person in violation of 20 VSA 2368 C6 that causes serious bodily injury or death of the person shall be imprisoned, et cetera. Thank you. Any questions for Bryn on that? Uh, Tom. Thank you. I, I know we're not there yet, but um, is, is everything uh, uh, being added here? It, um, is that all of the uh, requests by DPS other than, I guess, with the effect, effective dates? Um, so is that, is that a question for me about whether this yeah. encompasses yeah. everything that DPS wanted? Yeah, I, I guess starting with the in violation of 20 BSA and uh, is, was that by request of DPS? And then when you get down to uh, section seven, line 10 in the amendment, Right, so the, the next instance of amendment is, um, it was not their request. This is like some, um, this is some cleanup really. Oh, okay. Which I can explain. Right, but, but the, so, in violation, so the in violation of 20 <clears throat> BSA was what they wanted? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. I'll okay. forward the message to the House Judiciary that, that this is based on, Tom, so you'll see it. Right, and, then, and yeah. there wasn't there wasn't anything else. You'll see there wasn't anything else in there that's not being being added. So, okay. So, go ahead, Brim. So the second instance of amendment strikes out um, the last three section of sections of the bill, which are um, those three sections that were a little tricky to explain because um, remember what you're doing here is you're amending. Um, amendments that have not yet gone into effect. So you're amending prospective amendments. So that meant we had to do some tricky things with um, repeals and, and amending effective dates. So um, I just went about it in a different way because the bill as you passed it did include the justifiable homicide statute. So since that's included in the bill now, um, the way I've approached uh, the former version of the standards and the justifiable homicide statute as they were amended in Act 165 is to simply repeal the two provisions in Act 165, the standards for law enforcement use of force and the amendment to the justifiable homicide statute, repeal those 
and repeal their effective dates. So if you see here in section seven, that 2020 acts and resolves number 165, section one, two, and subsection A of section five, those are those repeals. So instead what we're doing is we're just repealing what you did in 165, and then we're putting in the effective dates um, which provides that the effective date section and the repeal section both take effect on July 1st and the rest of the act takes effect on September 1st, which includes the law enforcement um, standards for law enforcement use of force and the justifiable homicide statute. So you're bumping out that date to September 1st. Is that clear? I know it's a little, um, it's a little like jar legislative council jargony what we're doing there, but um, I hope that that clears that up a little bit. <laughs> I know. Folks, and in terms of the September one, um, that was important to D, um, to DPS. That's just want to make clear that that is in there. Um, questions on on this drafting? Tom, your hand. I will say that the second or the end of the amendment where I think Martin said it gets a little tricky. I'll just say in Bryn we trust. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that might be my report tomorrow, except I'm not allowed to use names, but. Uh... Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bryn. Okay, so we um, we do need to vote on this uh, so that Martin, as the uh, reporter of the bill, can can report um, to the body. So I would um, entertain a motion um, to treat the amendment as um, favorable. So moved. Second. And um, we could do a we could do a show of hands, uh, either the icons or physical hands. That that would be that would be fine. Um, so all those in favor of treating the amendment as friendly. Coach, are you voting? Thank you. All those opposed? Yeah, Some folks lower their hands. Um, okay, and I, is Felicia the only one that's not here? Am I missing anybody? Do I need to record this? I think it's just uh, Felicia. Excuse me. Um, no, that's okay. It's being recorded by us being on on YouTube, so that, that's that's fine. Okay. Thank so, you. so um, so ten zero one in favor. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Bryn, is this the the version that I can forward to the, uh, or am I waiting for it to go through editors or? This, this one's ready to go. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Great. Thank you so much, Bryn. Okay. So great. I think, I think that is it. <laughs> um, okay. And sorry, everybody about the um, pretrial services. I just, for some reason, I always had it as a Wednesday. Um, but anyway, then we were, turns out we were actually on the floor. So, but it is recorded. So we can, we can watch it. Uh, and then tomorrow um, at nine o'clock, we're gonna hear from Lee McGrath. So great. And uh, Barbara, um, I welcome you and Felicia, if you wanna um, you know, introduce, introduce him, you know, I'll, I'll welcome him. And then if you wanna, sure. you know, if you and Felicia wanna say a few words or you know, whatever. But, great. But it was, it was very easy to, uh, to get him to, um, to be here. So that's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm pleased. I think people will find it interesting. Okay. All right. Good. Um, 
Is there a reason that name's familiar? Lee McGrath? It's probably not that un uncommon a name. Right. I know a lot of McGraths in Vermont. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's it. That, that may be it. But. but Felicia heard him at a conference in DC that she went to. So I don't know if you were at that conference too. I don't know what it was, but. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So let's have. Thank you.